Today's daf is daf mem gimel. And let's review the mission on daf mem beis and beis very quickly. Mudar hanoa michaver lo yish ilenu, velo yishal mimenu, lo yalvenu, velo yilva mimenu, velo yimkar lo, velo yikach mimenu. So there's a very big chiddush here in the Mishnah, which we have to understand that there's a mudar and a madir, and we understand very well that the mudar is not allowed to borrow from the madir, not allowed to uh, ask for a loan. He can't even uh, receive something in a sale. But why does it go the other way around? That's what the Gemara is going to ask now on the top of Adaf Mem Gimel. Bishlema loyal venu. I understand that the madir cannot extend a loan to the mudar because certainly the kamahanile, the mudar, is getting benefit from the money of the madir because he needs that halva. El shelo menu, but that the mudar cannot extend a halva to the madir. My kamahanile. Well, what, what's the uh, what's the problem here? The the, the mudar anoa is not getting anoa by extending a loan. He's losing his money. It's the madir who gains something. And the gemara is going to ask the same kasha again and again in different forms until finally it offers a terrace. Bishlema lo yilvei menu. I understand that if the madir would extend a loan to the mudar, then the mudar is getting anoa from the madir. Even if the mudar is paying for an object, but he's still buying an object from the madir and getting hano to come as hani mine. Ella, but what about the reverse? Lo yishal himenu, my come as hani mine. Or according to the girsa of the ran, a slightly different girsa, bishleim lo yilva menu lo yikach menu lo yishal himenu to come as hani le. Ella lo yashi lenu that the Mudar is not allowed to lend something or loyal venu or extend a loan to the madir, karlo, and the mudar cannot sell some object to the madir. My is hanimine. What uh, prohibition is there if the mudar is giving hano to the madir? The mudar is not receiving hano. Again, if he borrows or he gets a loan or he purchases some object from the mother, then I understand the mudar is getting enough from the mother, and that's also, but the reverse. On Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Hanina, we have to reinterpret the Mishnah. There was a mutual Iser Hano and a Nedr that was taken both from the Madir onto the mudar and from the mudar onto the Madir. So it's absolutely correct that a mudar hano is allowed to lend his objects to the madir. But in this case, al Dubar, we're talking about a scenario in which the, the mudar was madir the madir, so the madir now also becomes a mudar. And now we have the dissenting view of Abai. Abai Omar, let's take a break here and expand and insert a few words here. Abai says that in a case where he's a mudar hanomi menu, and the Mishnah says that the mudar is not allowed to have any benefit from the madir, then even if it's a one way street and there was only an iser hano that was imposed by the madir on the mudar, but not in the reverse, there was no reciprocal. Eastern nether was taken, but nevertheless, we still don't want to allow the mudar to extend a she'ela or a halva or a mecher to the madir. Why? The chachamim here were choshesh that maybe if the mudar is going to extend a loan or a lending to the Madir, then maybe it'll go the other way of reverse as well. Mistakenly, the Madir will extend a loan to the Mudar. And the people involved in this neder of a Madir and Mudar will not be sensitive to the distinction. So from being 
Shoel, he might come to be Marshall, and from being Marshall, he might come to be Shoel. V'chein Kulu, also in Halvon and Mekach, we're going to come to this violation of an Iser Hano, and therefore they institute this Gzeru. And this leads us to the Mishnah here on Daf Mem Gimel. And there are two parts to this Mishnah. This Mishnah, on the one end, is a continuation of the Mishnah back on Daf Mem Gimel, Mem Beis Amid Beis, where we establish that the Mudra Anomi Chaver Lo Yeshileno Lo Yishal Mimenu, and this Mishnah is coming to clarify that even though there's an Isa on the Mudar to borrow something from the Madir, but there is a situation and a scenario, there is what we call a method of circumventing the Halacha and finding a modus vivendi, a mechanics by which the Mudar could in fact borrow something from the Madir. And what the Gemara is going to try to set up here, based on this Mishnah, is possibilities in which the Hano will not go directly from the Madir to the Mudar, but through an agent in between. And thus, be makif, circumvent the Iser Ned. That's going to be the first part of this Mishnah. The second part of the Mishnah is going to explain how in certain circumstances you could allow the mudar to benefit from this per person through a different kind of hana. So let's go through the Mishnah. The Mishnah says the following. Amar lo, a person asks his friend, Hashileni Paroscha, can you lend me your cow? I need your cow to plow a field or to milk the cow, whatever it might be. Amalo. And the owner of the cow says to the Mavakesh, Eina Pnuya, which literally means it's not free. In other words, right now it's working on my behalf. I can't lend it to you. But I think the Mavakesh realizes that this is just a lame excuse that the owner of the Pura is coming up with some sort of a story to cover up for the fact that he really doesn't want to lend him the Pura. The Omar. And now, in response to the Eno Pnuya of the Bala Pura, the Vavakesh declares an Eden, Kodem, Kodem Sodai, Shani Chorish Boliol. I accept upon myself a konam that will prohibit me for the rest of eternity to be choresh with this para. <clears throat> so this is what's called osar al atzmo charisha sodeu beparas chavero. Now, Again, on the psychological level, before we get to the nitty-gritty halachic chakira, the suffolk in the Mishnah, perhaps we could say the following. There's a phrase in English, go fly a kite. As if to say psychologically, I asked to borrow something from you, you refused. You know what I'm going to say to you? I don't need your help. I don't need you to lend me what, whatever object I'm having. Whenever I do harisha with a, with a para, it's not going to be your para. You refuse to lend me your para. I never want to use your para. But now the Mishnah goes into the following question. When the madir, the mavakesh, as we said, declares, kodam sadai, shani chorish boliola, what is the emphasis here on Sadai? Is he saying that that Pura will never ever do Harisha in my field? Sadai, my Sada is completely excluded from Harisha from this Pura, which would mean that no one else can take your Pura and be Harish my field. Or Alternatively, let's de-emphasize the word sadai and let's emphasize the harisha aspect. 
And the mission establishes that in Hayadarko Lachrosh, if the Madir, who's being Madir himself and accepting upon himself a Neder, is generally accustomed to personally get involved in Harisha. So then we interpret his neder as who oser al atzmo becharisha bekol adam mutarim. He's only saying that I'm going to accept upon myself a radical change with regard to this para that you refuse to lend me. That I will not do harisha. But again, the emphasis is on the ma'isa harisha, and he's saying I won't do harisha. With that part, he's not saying that somebody else will not do harisha with that part. Oh, Dilma, perhaps it's a dako lichrosh. He himself never does harisha. He's above that. You know, he's a, he's an executive, a white collar executive. You know, see, he doesn't get down on all fours to do the threshing. Then we interpret his neder as who v'chol adam asurit. We're not going to say that his kavana was to ask on himself harisha because he never does harisha in any event. So the emphasis there shifts from the Maisa harisha to the sod itself. And what basically he's taking upon himself through this neder is that the sod will not benefit from your para. And that means that no matter who does the harisha, whether it's me or it's going to be someone else, that's included in the isur. So again, just to repeat, if he never does the harisha, then it does make sense to say that he took upon himself a neder not to do the harisha. But rather he's saying that his sod will not benefit from this para vis-a-vis harisha. No one is going to be able to be harish his field. Now let's go back to the first scenario. Hamudra no mechavero, the enlo ma yochal. Is there a way of circumventing a violation of this Iser Hana through Neder in a case where he has no other supply and source for food. Let the Madir do the following. Go to a Chenvani, some sort of middleman. The Omer, he declares, Ish ploni no der mimeni Hana ve'enu der ma esen. I don't know what to do. How do I circumvent this neder? For who now the chanvani no sein lo uba v'notol mize. The chanvani will extend mazon to the mudar ano. So the mazon is not coming from the madir to the mudar, and therefore the tashlum of Mazon is not coming from the Madir to the Mudar. And that's called Hano Bakifen. The Mudar is getting Hano, but indirectly through the agency of the Chenvani. And the Mishnah adds another possible way of allowing the Mudar to get Achila from the Madir. Hoyabeso Livnos. The mudar needs to build a house or gdero ligdor or to put up a fence, so they or to plow or harvest this field. Holy hates a pole. And therefore the madir goes to the pole of the omer and he says to the pole and to the workers, Ish pony mudar mi many hanov, any of them So they get the message. They will build his house, these pole or the fence or harvest the crop, and then they'll come back and take the payment and the wages from the person who told them that we have to find the solution to the problem. So even though, in effect, the Madir is paying for the Poland to work on behalf of the Mudar, but nevertheless, it wasn't direct. And Hoyum Alchem Baderech, if a person who's also lehenos is on the derech, the elo mayochal, 
the mudra has no food, no sainly echad, he gives, the mother gives his mozon to a person, l'shum aton as a gift. And now the person who receives the gift will pass over, fork over this mozon to the mudar, v'ala mutarba. And the Buddha is allowed to accept this gift because he's not getting the gift directly from the Madir, but rather through the agency of no saintly effort, of somebody who's there and will accept this maton and pass it on. Another possible way of circumventing the Yisra Neder, im eni mochem acher, if there's no other person that the Madir could give the Muslim to as a gift, he takes the food, puts it on an open boulder or fence. He declares, Let anyone come and take it. And then the Mudr Allah no tell Esamazon the and he eats it. And again, he's not getting direct Hanoah from the Madir, but rather he's being Zochim and Hefka Rabbi Yossi also. So the question is, why does Rabbi Yossi prohibit this circumvention through Hefker? Omar Rabbi Yochanan, my time into Rabbi Yossi, because sover Hefker ke matona. Ma matona ad isa. Mirshus no sin, Mirshus makabel af Hefker ad isi, Mirshus zoche, Mirshus makabel. Hefker is not chal until somebody picks it up. And this is the equation that Rabbi Yossi posits between Hefker Maton. And if that be the case, then what we have here is a problem because until somebody else is Zoha, it still belongs to the Mafkir, which means that the Mozo never left the Rishus of the Mafkir until the Mudar was Zoha in it. So he's being nana directly from the Madir. And that's why Rabbi Yossi has a problem, because there's no hefker until someone else claims ownership. This, by the way, is the logic of Tosa at the beginning of Sochim, that, that Bittel could not be mitam hefker, because when a person's revatel is chomix, according to Rabbi Yossi, it never leaves his rishos until someone else picks it up. And when a person's revatel is chomix, no one else picks it up. Moser Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba raises the following question, objection to Rabbi Yochanan, Based on a brisa, the madir wants to give hana to the muda, and he's allowed to be mafkir his mazam, vala, and the muda no tell v'yochel. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Oser, Om Rabbi Yossi, Emosai. When do I say it's asur for the muda to be zoch in this mazam from hefkir? Bizman shenidro kodem left kero. That's only because he had already taken the neder. The Madir already answered the Mudr and Anna before he made it Hefkin. And here we turn to Mem Gimel Abbas, I will Hoyef Kero Kodum Linijo Harezem Mutter. If he was Mafkir at first, he said about his Muslim, let it be Hefkir, and only then he took the Neder, then there's no Chalos Isra of Muslim, and the Mudr is allowed to pick up the Hana. And the Mozon from Hefker, but that's against Rabbi Yochanan. The E, I mean, if Rabbi Yochanan is correct, Adios, the Shusha Zoche, Mali Nijo, Kodum left Keru, Mali of Keru, Kodum Nijo. Even if he was Mafkirit before the Nether, it's irrelevant. Why? Because the Mudder is only going to benefit from it at the point that he's Zochem in a Hefker. And at that moment in time, it leaves the Rishus of the Madir and goes into the Rishus of the Mudar. So in both these cases, whether it's Nijo Kodum Lefkero, or even in the case of Efkero Kodum Le Nijo, in both these cases, the Mudar Ano is benefiting from the Mazon directly from the Madir. And therefore, we must conclude that even according to Rabbi Yossi, something that's Hefker leaves the Rishus of the Mafkir before someone else is Zochen. 